Okay, so I've got on a bit of a uneven uh, surface right now, but it's just happened to do. Yeah, so uh, this whole time I've been out here, I'm yet to have a bowel movement. Uh, James is a two, I'm a zero at the moment. Uh, kind of shows how little it's been at, which is pretty much zero. Uh, I've noticed like I'm insects, I ate a lizard, uh, I've had a cricket, I've had a few worms, a few uh, ants as well, uh, a few bugs, uh, and a few berries, but it's not really enough to kind of make a bowel movement, so I'm kind of concerned that I probably might go this whole journey without it. Uh, at the moment, uh, we currently, we've got kind of two things in the world, we've got thriving or surviving. At the moment, we're just surviving, which isn't the best. Uh, that just means we're going, we're eating hand to mouth, uh, we're not getting enough calories in, uh, which isn't too good. Hopefully, when we start fishing, hopefully, the catching of fish is going to change that. We're going to start tomorrow, uh, but we're kind of the rain, it's going to be more unpredictable. So, it's now raining during the day as well, which is making a difference to be outside. It kind of drops your body temperature, it gets you wet. Uh, I want to concern. Uh, in terms of this whole experience, my idea was to do it with as few kind of survival tools as possible. Uh, I feel like uh, James might be taking the kind of easy way out at the moment, uh, using like a black bin bag uh, to you know stay warm at night. Uh, when we were travelling to a destination naked, uh, he put so he put so uh, his socks on and he put my socks on as well. Uh, and that I don't know. I feel like that's not too much survival. Uh, he could have fixed that issue with duct tape on his feet like I did, uh, but he chose not to. So yeah, I guess we're going to see uh, what pans out. Because uh, you want to have like a tough experience, you don't want to make it too easy on yourself. Uh, doing stuff like that makes it a bit too easy, but you know, each to their own. I guess we both have different ideas about this project, essentially. Uh, I want a more of a war survival, I guess he would use any equipment to kind of do that. But I guess uh, we'll see how that pans. Uh, sleeping in the shelter is a lot easier now. Uh, it's got s plenty of leaves in there, so that you know there are still drips coming through, and it does still get wet. But we're not getting soaked, which is a lot nicer. But uh, yeah, I look forward to uh, getting home after some of my days. We're about we've been in Malaysia for almost two weeks now. Uh, so another week and a, and a few days, and we will we will we have like. We've been in Malaysia for an, about two weeks now, so another week and a few days, and we, we uh, will be uh, back home eating full meals, which I'm very excited about. But yeah, uh, it's all going well. The blackouts are getting worse. Uh, the way to describe how the blackouts work for me, at least, uh, is that it kind of visionettes, it starts with visionetting, and it kind of the blackness fades in until there's a tiny circle, tiny circle, tiny circle to see through. And that goes, and it kind of goes away. Uh, but this t one of my latest ones, uh, it actually hurt my head. That's the first time I felt pain, like actual real pain from a uh, blackout, which doesn't bode too well. But yeah, uh, keep doing it. My scar is not going to heal whilst I'm out here. I've kept to that. I'd have to see a doctor when I get back to England. Uh, but other than that, you know, I'm still doing fine. You know, the hunger doesn't affect me that much. Uh, it's the low energy that affects me. Like, I don't, as much as I want food, I'm not feeling like, oh, I need some food. Like you would in England. Or maybe that's because that food's so accessible in England that, like, when you don't have it, you're like, well, oh, it kind of hurts, I kind of need it. But out here, we know food's not really much of an option at the moment because we haven't seen that many. We haven't seen... Uh, many creatures, kind of like mammals and reptiles, to eat. To be honest, we haven't seen any. Well, I've had one lizard myself. James saw a large lizard the other day. I saw a monitor lizard uh, back at our first location. It's just coming uh, almost like two weeks ago. But yeah, keeping on well, doing fine. Low energy is bad. I'm getting a bit too skinny, which means that. My body's having difficulty burning in my remaining fat because it is kind of trying to hold on to it because you know you do need fat to survive. Yeah, I think that's it for now. But yeah, no, I do think James, one of the key things that he's able to do is a great motivator. Having two people out here is a lot easier, I think it's probably a lot better than having one. 
because uh, one person will uh, kind of having two people means you're kind of more motivated. You've got someone else to kind of like keep each other motivated uh, uh, and kind of keep each other strong. When you've got one person, you kind of by yourself, and it's probably easier for you to give up. But yeah, two people help to keep you motivated uh, and keep you going quite hard. Also, yeah, I can tell how bad uh, this lack of nutrition, lack of food is affecting me. It's like my knee injury, which I sustained on the first location, by falling part way down a uh, very, very short ravine, maybe eight feet, seven, eight feet, not really sure. Uh, well, I didn't fall the whole way, but my, leg, my knee kind of caught, stayed on the surface. It's not healing. That would be like a three, four day maximum injury uh, in England when you're eating plenty of food. Out here, it's been two weeks and it's not doing much much healing at all. Yeah, I think that's it for now. I'm gonna uh, let Jane speak to the camera soon. That's my knee. That is my knee. That is my knee. That is my knee hurting. Good. Yeah. Sweet. So, uh. Right now we're going to make ourselves, or try to make, uh, try to make ourselves a improvised uh, fishing net using this. Uh, we know where the river is. Uh, we've been kind of delayed going back there for quite a few days now. It's so maybe been what three days, James? Yep. Because uh, energy's been low. Uh, I'm kind of like also kind of hoping for my hand to heal a bit more because once water gets to it, it kind of starts the healing process all over again. Yep. Uh, but we're going to crack on and see what we can make. At the moment, my energy levels are super low. I'm blacking out every most times I'm standing up, pretty much. Uh, my last blackout actually hurt for the first time. Uh, find this. Find a corner, so there's mosquito on it. Four corners. I wanna try find my way up. In what looks like almost a straight line. And there we go. So I'm gonna make one. Hold it over to give it a bit more strength. So you could be carrying a certain amount of water out the uh, river. And use this line. basic knots. She's on fisherman knots. Uh, I didn't know how to do fisherman knots at one point in the past but you kind of forget. Can we just uh, go, can we go back to the... I'll do part of it again. I wasn't recording, unfortunately. Okay, so right now, yeah, it's going to be making a uh, imp improvised. Yeah, so right now, we're going to be making a improvised uh, fishing net. Uh, 
I'm from this mosquito net. I haven't been fishing before uh, in my life, so it's kind of part guesswork and part from a theory from what I've read online uh, on the old Wikipedia, I guess. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to crack on. Yeah, we haven't been able to go fishing in a while. Well, we've known where the river, the river is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. So yeah, uh, we haven't been able to go fishing in a while. We've known where the uh, river is, uh, but we've kind of been delayed by lack of energy. Uh, also, I've been kind of hoping for my wound to heal a bit more, because uh, whenever it hits water, it kind of starts the healing process all over again, and it's going to increase the chances of uh, infection. So I was going to kind of use this fishing line to kind of like put it together. I'm not using a proper fishing knot. I uh, used to know how to do them, but uh, kind of that kind of goes out your mind whilst you're out here. Put a few on it. So what I've done as well is kind of roll it up to make it a bit stronger. As that's got to be pulled out of the water essentially. Go into my uh, medical kit. Get myself some scissors. So we can cut it at the right length. I'm kind of guessing the length. Better to cut too long than to uh, cut too short. There we go. That's one corner done. I'll find another corner. Give it a fold, just a decent amount, just to give it a bit more strength when it comes out of the water as you will be pulling up a fair bit of water because these holes are quite uh, small, so it take a while to drain out. There is no way to know. There's no way to know if this uh, fishing method will work or not. It's just pure trial and error. Have you ever been fishing, James? Yeah, once. So you are already. I've never caught the, anything. You are. You're already the most experienced fisher here. <laughs> so uh, let's see what happens. I've not been this this type of fishing. When was the last time you went fishing? Um. About a month before we came out here. You're an expert compared to me then. How long were you fishing out there for? Fun. How long were you fishing? About half a day. Half a day. Yeah. Are you out there fishing with? My brother. Nice. Okay, I'm gonna cut this again, give it some land. I think there's a corner that I use anyway. Same repetitive action again. And again. Oh, it's got bitten by another insect. Always a pleasure. What do you think our hopes, our chances of catching fish are, James? Um, 
it wasn't the kind of river where you could tell anything was living in there so yeah. we are doing it a little bit blind um, we hope there's life in that river unlike this forest um, yeah it's just trial and error yeah. man we're just gonna have to keep trying yeah you know yeah where there's will there's a way but unfortunately neither of us are called will no. so you're gonna have to just rely on faith but neither of us are called faith what do we have? Um, we have a James and we have a Dan. We've got beginner's luck. Uh, yeah, we need some of that to be fair. I'm hoping that is a real thing, beginner's luck. So yeah, this type of fishing, I think, will be called uh, Sien, or Sen fishing. I'm not really sure, but you can uh, always edit out, uh, or just voice over what kind of talking. <laughs> it comes to, it's probably 100% incorrect. So, there we go.
thinking about it, if we uh, had Jesus along with us, we'd only need one uh, one fish. Yeah. There'd be a thousand of us. I don't think either of us packed them, so it's been very difficult. The more kind of pieces of, uh, of string we kind of tie, uh, the more type of pieces of string we kind of tie here, uh, that's going to reduce the pressure on each part of this very obviously weak mosquito net. So kind of the more we do, the better. We make it a bit more complex. Okay, I seem to have tied it to each to each other. Yeah, about using any piece of string. Oh well, it's got to do that part again. Don't have to do that. Go for recording. Um, yeah.
go. And all the way, all the uh, way around now. Uh, next is to tie the string together. Oh, some bamboo. It's hard to do. We need to find a decent tree for now, temporarily. We've got some bamboo, which is near to the river. Obviously, we won't use it. We won't kind of go get it until uh, it comes to the chance. So for now, just leave it like that. Try to make ourselves an improvised uh, fishing net using this. So we know where the river is. Uh, we've been kind of delayed trying to back that for quite a few days now. It's maybe been what three days, James? Yep. Uh, but because energy's been low, uh, I'm kind of like also kind of hoping for my hand to heal a bit more because once water gets to it, it kind of starts the healing process all over again. Yeah. Uh, but we're going to crack on and see what we can make. moment my energy levels are super long blacking out every time most times i'm standing up pretty much uh my last blackout actually hurt for the first time uh find a corner for this mosquito net Having a certain amount of water out the uh, river. Use this line. Basic knots. It's on fisherman knots. Uh, I didn't know how to do fisherman knots at one point in the past, but kind of forget. Can we just uh, go, can we go back to the? I'll do part of it again. Okay, so right now, yeah, it's going to be making a uh, imp improvised, yeah, so right now we're going to be making an improvised uh, fishing net uh, from this mosquito net. I haven't been fishing before uh, in my life, so it's kind of part guesswork and part from a theory from what I've read online uh, on the old Wikipedia, I guess. Uh, 
Yes, you want to crack on. Yeah, we haven't been able to go fishing in a while. Oh, well, we've known where the river, the river is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So yeah, uh, we haven't been able to go fishing in a while. We've known where the uh, river is, uh, but we've kind of been delayed by lack of energy. Uh, also, I've been kind of hoping for my room to heal a bit more because uh, whenever it hits water, it kind of starts the healing process all over again, and it's gonna increase the chances of uh, infection. So I was going to kind of use this fishing line to kind of like put it together. I'm not using a proper fishing knot. Uh, I used to know how to do them, but uh, kind of that kind of goes out your mind whilst you're out here. Got a few in it. So what I've done as well is kind of rolled it up to get a bit stronger. But that's got to be pulled out of the water essentially. Let's go into my uh, medical kit. Get myself some scissors. So we can cut it at the right length. I'm kind of guessing the length. It's better to cut too long than to uh, cut too short. There we go. That's one corner done. Find another corner. strength when it comes out of the water as you'll be filling up a fair bit of water because these holes are quite There is no way to know. There's no way to know if it's a uh, fishing method will work or not. This is pure trial and error. Have you ever been fishing, James? Yeah, once. So you are already. And I never caught anything. You are. You're already the most experienced fisher here. <laughs> so uh, let's see what happens. I've not been this this type of fishing. When was the last time you went fishing? Um. About a month before we came out here. Are you an expert compared to me then? How long were you fishing out there for? Fun. How long were you fishing? About half a day. Yeah. Who are you out there fishing with? My brother. And can again get some lines. Let's check. Another corner. Bitten by another insect. Always a pleasure. What do you think our hopes, our chances of catching fish are, James? Um, it wasn't the kind of river where you could tell anything was living in there, so yeah. we are doing it a little bit blind. Um, we hope there's life in that river. Unlike this forest, 
Um, yeah, it's just trial and error, man. We're just gonna have to keep trying. Yeah. You know. Yeah, where there's will, there's a way. But unfortunately, neither of us are good will. No. So we're gonna have to just rely on faith. But neither of us are full faith. What do we have? Um, we have a James and we have a Dan. We've got beginner's luck. Uh, yeah, we need some of that to be fair. I'm hoping that is a real thing, beginner's luck. So yeah, this type of fishing, I think, is what we call uh, CN or CN fishing. I'm not really sure, but you can uh, always edit out uh, what's voiceover. I'm kind of talking now. <laughs> I can't see. It's probably hard to see. Let's try this. Yeah.
about it. If we uh, had Jesus along with us, we'd only need one uh, one fish. Yeah. There'd be a thousand of us. Yeah. I don't think either of us would have any food with us. Nice. kind of pieces of, uh, of string to kind of tie, yeah, the more type of piece of string to kind of tie here, uh, that's going to reduce the pressure on each part of this very obviously weak mosquito net. So I hope the more we do the better. Tied it to each to each other. Yeah, it's yeah. not using any of his string. Oh, well, just gotta do that part again. GoPro recording. Playing? Yeah.
now. Uh, next is to tie this thing together. We've got some bamboos near to the river. Yep. Obviously, we won't use it. We won't kind of go get it until uh, it comes with a chance. So for now, we'll just leave it like that. Okay, she's turned it so Yeah, I was stuck before then. My bad for the uh, head in there. Yeah, it's just, just getting restless, man. Yeah. So, so.
this cool sort of book. Huh? Lies on my camera. Recording, yeah. <laughs> cool shot. That's like what five seconds of footage. So you can use that in the edit. Yeah. Don't want to watch this back though. No. no. I might. Probably will, but you don't know. Probably will. But it's not a cool screenshot. Uh, especially when someone else ed edits it. How long did it take you to edit your one of the clips of the house? I think it's like in total, it's like, like a, a minute 30, I think. So yeah. About 100 seconds, like this. Yeah. Uh, it took a while, my computer c kept crashing, but a lot of it was like, I had to like label all the files. Your, your one was so much more dramatic than, I saw the Firefox media yeah. one for the first time, like, a yeah. month ago. It was just the voice that was going. It's boring. Fucking annoying. Yeah, I just know how to edit, you know. I knew what story I wanted to show in the, in the edit that I wanted to do. Uh, and as you noticed, in it, I didn't put cycle, any cycling in until the end, near the end. I don't know if you remember that. Uh, I wanted to create a story using the edit thing. Mm. And yeah. Because I wanted that to be like building up to it. I had good music on there. So I still did it. Use good pacing. Pacing. Just got to get ready for the day. Yeah, I didn't like the bark off the edit. You didn't? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's boring, isn't it? Yeah. Went on for way too long as well. Yeah. I'll show you that. I had five sixteen gigabyte SD cards with Go GoPro S SD cards. Oh. That's what I had. Did you shot quite well on that though. Yeah, it's lucky because obviously the lighting is obviously really good, but this footage looks a lot better. Listen to him, mate. Listen to him. That, the pouch is going less and less. I know it's the other way, it's getting less and less, isn't it? Yeah. So can you be able to get, like, do you think you'll be able to maintain it even, or do you think you'll be able to uh, get even smaller when you leave? Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's you about toning, isn't it? Yeah, about keeping the motivation to kind of get. Yeah, man. You've got, like, three months to like, travelling. Yeah. Obviously, like, the first meal I'm going to have. Oh, yeah, you're going to be fat, dirty meals. Fat, dirty. And then once you kind of, and once you kind of, the whole feeling of being hungry for that amount, 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 amount of days is gone, and it's kind of, it's like eating wise. Yeah, man. I think my appreciation of food, food will be different. Yeah. Like, I don't need to eat nice food every day. Yeah. Like I can eat food like pussy and veg more and more. Yeah. There's some decent meals for like a two in. Yeah. Because oh, like yeah. we just eat, we eat like a good amount as well. Like I'd be just smashing the. Cheese on the oh my god! Cheese, that, that chicken, that's so nice, isn't it? Nothing's so nice, isn't it? The thing is, I don't need to eat all these meals and 
birth and everything like that. Yeah. You know. Once it's set on the scales, yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna give myself sort of half a stone, sort of a bit leeway. No, no, it'll, it'll go on a bit faster than that, though, realistically. Because it's such a yo-yo diet at the moment. Yeah. 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 Wait, you say half? What did you say? Half a stone. Oh, so man, I was thinking half a kilo. Yeah, half a stone fair. Like, I don't really want to put any more on than half yeah. a stone. Which is seven pounds. Yeah. Yeah. So if if I get down to let's say twelve pound. Yeah. I don't really want to drop more than twelve and a half. It's gonna charge me in it by the way. Yeah. I don't know how good that one is though. It's a bit fucking unreliable. James, what do you have? Um, 25, you know, um, working ordinary job, 9 to 5. Um, so I decided to come and do this with Dan. Um, I wanted to test my body, really. It's one of my main, one of my main motivations as I was getting bored with the current, current situation. You know, I wanted to take, take myself really so far out of my comfort zone, which this has done. Um, and then test myself to, you know, say, can I do it? Have I got the perseverance? Have I got the, you know, drive, the ambition, you know, to survive? Um, yeah. And, you know, you see this kind of stuff on TV, and you think, nah, I wouldn't be able to do that. I wouldn't, wouldn't be able to do what they're doing. But, you know, I, I think everyone in, naturally inside them has the survival instinct. And the survival ability it's just about you know un unlocking that you know honing in them skills learning you know from each day day to day and you know how you can do better you know what needs to be done differently you know and, and these are real skills that you can uh, you can take into the re real world um, 
I can finish it. And it, you know, it's about, I, I like to challenge myself. I, I like the feeling of, you know, pushing, pushing my body to sort of the absolute limit. And then when you finish, you know, that sense of accomplishment, um, you know, that's a, that's a bit of a drug for me, you know. That's why I like to set myself these sort of different challenges every now and again. And they sort of seem to be getting bigger and bigger as I do these. Uh, so, what were your other challenges? You know, like I've done like an ultra marathon. Um, you know, I've done like a free kick challenge. I've done sort of small sort of challenges that you know people, you know, people do. But this seems to be the biggest one that's taken me out of my comfort zone. You know, test my body to different different limits you know not only physically mentally you know there's a lot of time out here that you know plays on your mind um but god only knows like what the next one's going to be because how do you top this you know i suppose it's only going to get bigger um but then i would have taken everything that i've you know there was a, i was a novice to this when i came out you know i would take everything that i've learned here into the next one and you know make that a success as well. What do you want to do next? I don't know. Like, you know, there's a few ideas floating around. Um, I'd like to do the, well, what Dan was sort of before he was spoken about, like an island thing, you know, living on a deserted island. Wouldn't mind trying something like that, um, you know, for, for a bit longer of a period of time. Um, something where, you know, Hunting can come into play. Um, maybe not something with uh, so much rain. Uh, so maybe a different part of the country. Other than that, I would just um, test myself like physically. But you know, I don't know. Maybe a cycle challenge, something along those kind of lines. Um, a walking challenge. Um, I don't know really. Um, I'd like to get this one over and done with first. To then, you know, think about that. The next, ne the next one. To be fair. absolute limit and then when you finish you know that sense of accomplishment uh, you know that's, that's a bit of a drug for me you know that's why I like to set myself into sort of different challenges every now and again and it seems to be getting bigger and bigger as I do these uh, so what are your other challenges? you know like I've done like an ultra marathon um, you know I've done that like, free kick challenge I've done sort of small sort of challenges that you know people you know people do but this seems to be the biggest one that's taken me out of my comfort zone you know test my body to different different limits you know not only physically mentally you know there's a lot of time out here that you know plays on your mind um, 
but God only knows like what the next one's going to be because how do you top this? You know, I suppose it's only going to get bigger. Um, but then I would have taken everything that I've, you know, I was a, I was a novice to this when it came out. You know, I would take everything that I've learned here into the next one and, you know, make that a success as well. What do you want to do next? I don't know. Like, you know, there's a few ideas floating around. Um, I'd like to do the sort of... Dan was sort of before has spoken about like an island thing and living on a deserted island. I wouldn't mind trying something like that. Um, you know, but for a bit longer of a period of time. Um, something where, you know, hunting can come into play. Um, maybe not something with uh, so much rain. Uh, so maybe a different part of the country. Either that or just um, test myself like physically. So, you know, I don't know, maybe a cycle challenge, something along those kind of lines. Um, a walking challenge. Um, I don't know really. Um, I'd like to get this one over and done with first. To then, you know, think about that the next the next one. To be fair, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. So, Dan, tell me tell me a bit about yourself and the motivations for why you're out here and what you're doing. Sure, yeah. Uh, well, I'm Daniel. Uh, we're kind of like a normal job in England. Uh, my motivation to be out here is kind of similar to the other challenges I've done in my life. I like to kind of uh, succeed and kind of like achieve certain things. Uh, so I've kind of, I tried to walk across uh, Europe when I was a bit younger. I didn't really get all the way across, anywhere near all the way across. I kind of uh, was too ambitious in my plans. I got a decent way. So like it wasn't like a, ma it wasn't a success in terms of like I got to where I wanted to be, but I learned all the things I wanted to learn. So it's more about the journey rather than the destination in that. Uh, like the other year, I uh, cycled across the Sahara Desert. I did it very successfully, uh, you know, did the whole way through, got where I wanted to be, learned what I wanted to learn as well, and it kind of gives you direction in your life. Uh, I like to kind of set myself like achievable kind of targets. Sometimes the targets are actually almost unachievable, but I like to set myself targets to have something to work towards rather than just like the normal kind of house kind of situation, a certain job uh, that other people do have. Uh, one of the key motivations for like this certain project uh, just I wanted to do something quite cool. Uh, I've been planning to kind of go to a desert island for the past, it could be about, it could be almost two years now, I can't remember how long. It's probably about 20 months, potentially. Uh, and that takes quite a long, long time to plan. So this is kind of something which is in the intermission at the moment, just to kind of uh, do before I go out there in the future, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to choose like a kind of a wet, kind of rainforest type environment. So that's kind of similar to a desert island. I've already been to the Sahara Desert, so you know this is a nice uh, other kind of variant, which is kind of meets in the middle. If you kind of combine the two, you kind of get yourself a desert island essentially. Okay, so. Asking more questions. Um, so, how are you finding this? Is this a struggle compared to the the other two challenges you've done? Or yeah, I'm finding the main thing about this. Uh, originally, in the first few days. The main problem was uh, having the amount of weight that you're carrying because, you know, with two people, we were like alone with just two people, and we've got all our camera gear, which is all on our back. You have to carry two bags at a time, full of chargers, batteries, uh, all of that. It's, it's quite difficult in that sense. Uh, but the main difficulty uh, at the moment is having the low energy. Uh, having my body fat go lower and lower, yeah, it becomes harder and harder uh, for the body to be able to kind of source energy. Uh, from the body rather than having any food but uh, yeah definitely the challenge is something which I'm very comfortable with uh, yeah I don't really come out here just to test myself I like to have that I like to have that sense of achievement and that go uh, testing myself isn't the main thing because like I know I can do certain things there's not like there's certain things like I know I can do uh, I know they put my mind to it, I can do it so I'm not coming out here to test myself but I'm coming out here to kind of achieve something very difficult so which is out of the norm. Uh, like a lot of people, uh, you know, when people were kids, you know, people wanted to be, you know, astronauts or you know, foot like famous like world class footballers. But uh, you know, I know I'm not going to be any of those two. But what I can do is push myself as hard as I can, 
give like a hundred and twenty percent, and I can you know achieve different things with like kind of different like successes, and uh, it's a different achievement, and it's not something which a lot of people could do because uh, people aren't willing to do it. People want to have the ambition or the drive to do it, and it kind of uh, gives you a whole different life. Because obviously in kind of the Western world, everything comes so easy to you. There's a you know all the, like twenty four hours. There's a shop like somewhere to kind of buy food. But uh, here, you kind of got to you kind of escape from it all. You kind of live a different life for a certain amount of days, and that's what kind of excites me. How different it is here compared to how I get home. But like my main, one of my main motivations nowadays, whilst I'm actually in this uh, rainforest, is to get that kind of satisfaction uh, and having that kind of that first meal when I get back to England, mm -hmm. like having a nice warm sausage roll. Mm -hmm. uh, I know it's simple. But that's something which I look forward to, and I feel like before I have that sausage roll, I need to kind of achieve what I want to achieve out here before I feel like I truly deserve it. How do you feel like you're going to adapt back into norm normal sort of nine to five routine, having been out here for sort of 21 days? Um, do you think that's going to be difficult, or do you think, you know, will the urge to, you know, sort of get back out straight away? Yeah, I feel like definitely uh, when you get back from kind of these adventures, like from the Sahara Desert, you get like a incredible high that you've kind of achieved something, and everybody is uh, trying to find out exactly what, what you did and that kind of stuff. But uh, getting back into the nine to five will be quite easy uh, because it will mean that I can just buy loads of food. <laughs> I'll be an extra shot. I'll be gorging on food for weeks and weeks and weeks, trying to get my body weight back up. Uh, so I'll definitely enjoy it. But there's always going to be that certain sense, a certain feeling of kind of dissatisfaction of uh, you know having had this experience and then obviously going back to the same job. There's always going to be that feeling of wanting to do something else mm. and wanting to kind of move forward. So yeah, definitely it's going to, uh, it's going to, it's going to make you essentially uh, push yourself further in your life in England uh, rather than being kind of happy in a place where you're at. Because I've, I've got a decent job, happy where it is, but you're going to want more. After this experience, you're always going to want more because it's hard to go back essentially, I think. So Dan, tell me, tell me a bit about yourself and the motivations for why you're out here and what you're doing. Cool, yeah. Uh, well, I'm Daniel. I uh, work kind of like a normal job in England. Uh, my motivation to be out here is kind of similar to the other kind of things I've done in my life. I like to kind of uh, succeed and kind of like achieve certain things. Uh, so I've kind of I've tried to walk across uh, Europe when I was a bit younger. I didn't really get all the way across, anywhere near all the way across. I kind of uh, was too ambitious in my plans. I got a decent way, so like it wasn't like a ma it wasn't a success in terms of like I got to where I wanted to be, but I learned all the things I wanted to learn. So it's more about the journey rather than the destination in that. Uh, like the other year, I uh, cycled across the Sahara Desert. I did it very successfully. Uh, you know, did the whole way through, got where I wanted to be, learned what I wanted to learn as well, and it kind of gives you direction in your life. Uh, I like to kind of set myself like achievable kind of targets. Sometimes the targets are actually almost unachievable, but I like to set myself targets to have something to work towards rather than just like the normal kind of house kind of situation, a certain job uh, that other people do have. Uh, one of the key motivations for like this certain project uh, is I wanted to do something quite cool. Uh, I've been planning to kind of go to a desert island for the past, it could be about, it could be almost two years now. I can't remember how long. It's probably about 20 months. Potentially, uh, and that takes quite a long, long time to plan. So this is kind of something which is in the intermission at the moment, just to kind of uh, do before I go out there in the future, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to choose like a kind of a wet, kind of rainforest type environment because that's kind of similar to Desert Island. I've already been to the Sahara Desert, so you know this is a nice uh, other kind of variant which kind of meets in the middle. You kind of combine the two to kind of get yourself a Desert Island essentially. Okay. Ask me more questions. Um, so how are you finding this? Is this a struggle compared to the o the other two challenges you've done? Or yeah, I'm finding the main thing about this. Uh, originally, in the first few days, the main problem was uh, having the amount of weight that you're carrying. Because you know, with two people, we were like alone with two people. We put all our camera gear, which is all on our backs. We have to carry two bags at a time, full of chargers, batteries, uh, all of that. It's it's quite difficult in that sense uh, but the main difficulty uh, at the moment is having a low energy uh, having my body fat go lower and lower yeah, it becomes harder and harder uh, for the body to be able to kind of source energy 
uh, from your body rather than having it in food. But uh, yeah, definitely challenge is certainly something I'm very comfortable with. Uh, yeah, I don't really come out here just to test myself. I like to have that. I like to have that sense of achievement and that goal. Uh, testing myself isn't the main thing because, like, I know I can do certain things. It's not like it's certain things like I know I can do. Uh, I know they put my mind to. It, I can do it. So I'm not coming out here to test myself. But I'm coming out here to kind of achieve something very difficult, something which is out of the norm. Uh, like a lot of people, uh, you know, when people were kids, you know, people wanted to be. You know, astronauts or yeah, foot like famous like world class footballers. But uh, you know, I know I'm not going to be any of those two. But what I can do is push myself as hard as I can, give like a hundred and twenty percent, and I can you know achieve different things with like kind of different like successes, and uh, it's a different achievement, and it's not something which a lot of people could do because uh, people aren't willing to do it. People might not have the ambition or the drive to do it. And it kind of uh, gives you a whole different life. It's obviously in kind of the Western world, everything comes so easy to you. There's a, you know, all the, like 24 hours, there's a shop sh- like somewhere to kind of buy food. But uh, here, you kind of got to kind of escape from it all. You kind of live a different life for a certain amount of days. And that's what kind of excites me, how different it is here compared to how I get home. But like my main, one of my main motivations nowadays, whilst I'm actually in this uh, rainforest, is to get that kind of satisfaction uh, and having that kind of that first meal when I get back to England. Mm-hmm. Like having a nice warm sausage roll. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know it's simple, but like, that's something which I look forward to. And I feel like before I have that sausage roll, I need to kind of achieve what I want to achieve out here before I feel like I truly deserve it. How do you feel like you're going to adapt back into norm- normal sort of nine to five routine, having been out here for sort of 21 days? Um, do you think that's going to be difficult or do you think, you know, will the urge to, you know, sort of get back out straight away? Yeah, I feel like definitely uh, when you get back from kind of these adventures, like from the Sahara Desert, you get like a incredible high that you've kind of achieved something and everybody's uh, trying to find out exactly what, what you did and that kind of stuff. But uh, getting back into the 9 to 5 will be quite easy uh, because it'll mean that I can just buy loads of food. <laughs> I'll be an extra shot. I'll be gorging on food for weeks and weeks and weeks, trying to get my body weight back up. Uh, so I'll definitely enjoy it, but there's always going to be that certain sense, that certain feeling of kind of dissatis- dissatisfaction of, uh, you know, having had this experience and then obviously going back to the same job. There's always going to be that feeling of wanting to do something else, mm. wanting to kind of move forward. So, yeah, definitely it's going to uh, gonna, gonna, it's gonna make you essentially uh, push yourself further in your life in England. Uh, rather than being kind of happy in a place where you're at. Because I've, I've got a decent job, happy where it is, but you're going to want more. After this experience, you're always going to want more. Because it's hard to go back, essentially, I think. So for another kind of day, I've had to go back into shelter very, very early due to the uh, rain uh, coming in earlier and earlier, just due to kind of like us getting deeper into the monsoon season. Uh, as you can see, it's not too looking too good outside. Take it while we while while we're sleeping, that yeah.
What's the noise? What noise? Listen. Can you hear it? What is what's that noise? Good. It sounds like, like one of my the charges in my bag. Really? Or is it egg timer or No. It's not an egg timer. Yeah, they do. What is that noise, you think? Mm. Well, I guess they'd have to do that soon. Why are you trying to sleep face to face with me? Do you have anything wrong with that? You're obsessed. Yeah, man. You're obsessed. What was this face looking you in the eyes? I'm trying to get some body warmth, mate. I'm fucking freezing. How cold are you? Quite cold. Are you not cold? Uh, I don't know. Who knows? Who knows what cold is anymore? I do. I don't.
It's this right now. Your bin bag should have you. It's, it's partly helping me. Does the body fat not help much? I don't know. It's just obviously because I'm not used to. Calling me fat then. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cheers then. Because I'm not used to having so little now. This is quite a little to, for me. It's a little for me. I want to say, oh, your body fat gone. Yeah. Right. Maybe you need to eat, eat some more ants, mate. Yeah. If you eat like a thousand ants, that's at least. 100 calories? Yeah. <laughs> That's bugs bite, mate. Nice. Mm. Good old bug bites. Your stomach grinding a lot now. Yeah. A lot more than it was the other day. Yep. Especially when I start thinking about food. Where does I say some food? No. Roast dinner. Roast lamb, yeah. Mint. No, I'm good. Oh, mate. Pop it all. Curry. Oh, mate. Rice. Uh, chili con carne. Southern fried chicken. KFC. Oh, man. McDonald's. Beef burger. Cheese. Cheese and toast. Beef. With like, but with like, it's like bubbling so nicely. You got some ketchup underneath it. Maybe some ketchup chili sauce. And the cheese is bubbling to the perfect amount, but it's still thick and just like greasy. What cheese have you gone for? I've gone, I, I prefer just cheddar to be honest, mate. Strong one though. Like mature cheddar, nothing yeah. too fancy. Real strong mature cheddar. Though. Yeah. That's what I like. So I have to start with cheddar, cottage cheese. 
<laughs> Bugs biting. Bugs biting. Maybe we should bang a gong every time we get a bug bite. Bong. You just feel them crawling sometimes. And then a bong. That's why we need to think out there. Yeah, it? soon. Stop them from getting underneath us. It's a cottage cheese. Oh, I'm not playing anymore. Why, are you getting too hungry? Yeah. David, uh, the more we talk about it, the more likely we're going to dream about it. Yeah, I don't know whether I want to dream about it. You don't want to dream about food? No, because it's just going to make food me Food dreams are my best dreams. Nah. Mate, Jennifer Lawrence or food dream? I'm taking food dream every time. Jennifer Lawrence and food dream. I don't care. Forget about it. I, Jennifer Lawrence can be inside the food dream, feeding me. And I'm like, nah, I feed myself, man. I just eat it all myself. Like, I wouldn't care. You can, you can, you can put Scarlett Johansson in there as well. I'm still going straight for those Oreos. I'm going straight for that sausage rolls. How are you going to get like, you know they used to, do they still do four for like three pounds? Yeah, rolls? four for three, yeah. You gonna get that? Oh mate, always do. With a steak, mate. Oh, no, no, I get them all. I get the four, four, three sausage rolls uh, for like when I'm actually at work. Yeah. But, like on the way to work when I'm when I've bought it, I'll, I'll eat like the steak bakes and that. Really? Yeah. I like a cheese cheese and bacon slice. Yeah, just try it for, for a boy. Cheese and bacon slice. I'll give yeah. it a go. That's not the one where like you can. It's does it look like does it look like a steak slice? No, it's like a turnover. It's like a turnover. Oh, no, I've never had those, actually. Yeah. I've avoided those ones. Why? Is the cheese, like, melted or is the cheese, like... Yeah, chills, cheese No, but melted. is it, like, hardened? A little bit, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'll give it... I'll, I'll give it a go, though. I will give it a go this time. No, Does it have to be warm to be nice? Yeah. What if it's not warm? Then ask for a warm one. No, they've got to put one in the oven. Fucking great because they've got everything in the oven, don't they? Mm. No, it's like if it's out on the show. What's your thoughts on the old sausage uh, bean and cheese melt? Really good. You a fan of that, yeah? Big, 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 big fan. Massive fan of that. What's your, in ranking order, how would you rank? Um, uh, steak slice. Steak slice is, always, is number one. Chicken slice and cheese and bean milk. Uh, steak slice, cheese and, cheese and bean sausage milk, and then chicken slice. Well, mate, but chicken slice is nice. No, but it's, it's, it's the cream isn't as good as like gravy, is it? Mm. Gravy is what makes all the best slices. We are looking at noises outside earlier. Don't know. Could be anything, mate. Could be the chupacabra. Some, that's a mythical, I think, Californian woodlands creature. Mexican creature, yeah. Is it Mexican? Oh, fair. Okay. Chupacabra. Yeah. Like big put, isn't it? It's in workaholics at one point, that's what they said. brought out. Thought they killed it. in South Park as well. Like, South Park's like Colorado, so far away. Mm-hmm. Your stomach grew out so loud, mate, you can scare tigers away. Yeah, man. That's a good thing. Talk about food. No, man. I'm getting too... Too hungry. I'm getting too cold. It's all food, it's all food, it's all food. I like the word association because it takes us so many different routes. No, no. Come on, man. No, Come on. No, no. Nando's. 
Oh, mate, Nando's. I do love What's your shit next door, Nando's? Eating it. Mm. Oh, no, what association? No, I'm just, just waiting right now. I'm, I'm, I'm ordering my Nando's. I'm getting my pit. Pitter and hummus, man. Mm. Mm, with a little drizzle. Mm. Oh, yeah. That's going with drizzle, you mouth. mean Drake? No, drizzle. Oh, yeah. That's going in my mouth, man. Warm pitter as well. Mm. No, that's just overrated, bro. No, man, just let me have my moment, man. Okay, you have your moment. Well, okay, man. I'm going to pretend to be the Nando's uh, person behind the till. Is it? Mm, yeah. Yeah, so I'm scared, man. It's like, okay, you walk in. Yeah. And they always ask you the same question. Have you been in Nando's before? Fucking, of course I've been in okay, Nando's. Okay, let me ask. Let me ask a question. Hey, hey, skinny dude. Obviously, because you've come from a, uh, you've come from the uh, from the jungle, so you're quite skinny. Mm-hmm. You ever been to Nando's before? You look like you've never even had a chicken. You look like you're vegetarian. Get out of my shop. Excuse, excuse me. Yeah. Excuse me, mate. I'm a fucking veteran at this, yeah. So don't ask me if I've been in Nando's, yeah. You swear so much, man. No, hey, oh, I'm just working. I'm just working my basic job, man. I yeah, need to swear. Yeah. Well, you know, let me just go order. So I go up, order. Right. What are you ordering? Uh, on table number. Duh, duh, duh. Yeah. Right. I want double chicken and pita. Yeah. Yeah. I want that hot. Yeah. I want cheese, p- pineapple in that as well. Oh yeah, cheese, pineapple. Mm. Mm. You getting any ham in that? No, you or, don't, don't do ham. Or pork? No, you don't do pork. Man, that doesn't even that good. I'm not a big fan. And then I want peri salted chips on the side. I want coleslaw as well. Yeah, some want, slaw. Yeah, man. I want uh, the pitter and hummus for starter. I also want three, three bowls of halloumi. And I want some perronese. Yeah. Mm, pronto. Okay, the wait time for that will be... Two days. What, what, what do you do now? Do you pull out a shotgun? I wait. You wait two days? Yeah. Is it that good you wait two days? Mate, I've waited 20. Let's see. Okay, where's your face? Yeah. Look. Okay. okay, so uh, yesterday you were kind of uh, facing issues with protect, like what could have been, for all we know, early onset hypothermia. Yeah. Uh, you're super cold, even during the day yep. uh, when it was sunny, when you was out in the sun, yep. uh, you'd have these cold waves come over you. Yep. Uh, how do you feel differently today? It's a new day. I'm feeling more positive today, actually. Um, you know, last night um, didn't rain as much. Uh, wearing a black bag to sort of trap in some body heat, that helped massively. Um, so that might have to, if it gets too cold, might have to be a Thing, thing that I start using um, and you know um, I had a decent night's sleep I wasn't in uh, you know puddles of water which was keeping me you know forever cold so obviously your water drops your yeah. temperature so quickly so you know I've woken up today and I'm actually feeling really positive like you know completely flip of a coin from yesterday um, you know ready to crack on with the day you know and try and see the project to the end mate which I reckon with more lights nights like that and you know with the precautions we're taking now I can I can do yeah sweet so uh, I guess uh, it's all worked out good the uh, black bean bag yeah man and maybe you can uh, take it home for fashion isn't it yeah man take it maybe set it in, in like next the River Island top man yeah, ASOS it, uh, you gotta stay to ASOS see it more as a Primark kind of kind more of a Primark type of power yeah man I guess you're not vying for any kind of uh, sponsorship deals from Primark. I could, I could always draw like a little Adidas logo logo on there, and you know, sell it for like fifty quid. Yeah, or Nike logo. Nah, more of a Adidas in it, man. Yeah. Yeah. The Cox Four Teeth. Nah, 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 nah. Why even, not? Because you know, sweatshops in it. All of them do sweatshops. <laughs> yeah, no. Every single one. Yeah, man. But yeah, no. What about you? How, how are you feeling today? Yeah, I feel fine. Just low energy as normal. Uh, body fat's dropping to so minimal levels now. In terms of, obviously, I can lose more body fat, but once you get below like 11% body fat, that's when it starts to have real uh, issues with you having low energy. As your body doesn't want to burn that remaining fat, as it's really important to your body's function. Yeah. You ready to? 
crack on and go fishing today? Yeah, let's give it a go. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling positive about it. Yep. Sweet, let's go. Sweet.